Jason. Welcome to Chanute High School, home of the Chanute Blue Cups. We'd like to welcome our guests here tonight from Winfield, the Vikings. And if you please stand, we ask that you remove your hats, face the flag, as we honor our country with the playing of the national anthem by the Chanute High School Band under the direction of Dr. A.J. Bue and Miss Rebecca Davis. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Comet Vision. My name is Caleb Wood. I am the director of broadcasting here at Chanute High School. This is, like I said, this is Comet Vision. We are a student-led broadcast here, bringing you this live stream today where the Chanute Blue Comets will take on the Winfield Vikings here at Chanute High School. Um, with me is senior... I would say, I would say, uh, what, veteran broadcaster, Braden Goff. How are you, Braden? I'm pretty good. I want to say veteran, but I'll take it for sure. Oh, you're, you're getting there. That's I'm for sure. I'm getting there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll put it that way. We're going to go ahead and start out with some uh, starting lineups. We have Lars Custer here, uh, number 33 guard. He's a senior. Jordan Duncan, also a senior, number 20 guard. Uh, Rhett Smith, number 12 guard, also a senior. Elias Stevenson, the third, number 35 uh, forward. He is a junior. And last but not least, Chris Harding the third. He is a sophomore here uh, with us today, number 10. And he also is a guard. Um, we have a great lineup or a great night coming up uh, of basketball. And we're going to go ahead and go to the varsity boys of Winfield starters. We got number one, Evan Hutto. Hutto? Hutto? Is that how you I, pronounce I think so. I mean, that's what it looks like, man. Uh, pardon, pardon us for uh, the mispronunciations. Uh, please let us know how we can fix that in the live stream comments section. Uh, number two, Drew Graham. He's a 5'11 uh, junior. Number three, Trevor Shelton. The senior standing at 6'1 there. Number 15, Kellen Gibson. The sophomore standing at 5'11. And finally, number 23, Christian Mori. The junior standing at six foot three, tipping off for us today is going to be number thirty-five, Elliot Stevenson, the junior, and number two, Drew Graham, five foot eleven, junior. Ball is up, and Graham comes out with the aggressive tip off, bouncing it right off of Maury's face. It seems like starting things out strong here for the Vikings. Graham bringing the ball up the court, guarded by Custer. Graham now gets the ball back, takes the screen, passes it to Hutto. 
Looking down low to Gibson, looking for the lob. Back out to Graham for a corner three, just short. Rhett Hazlitt, sorry, Rhett Smith, rather. That's the wrong different, sport there, man. <laughs> different, different CHS athlete there. Rhett Smith trying to save the ball, did not get that in soon enough. Graham now with the ball. Back to Hutto, driving, cutting back baseline, dishing it down low to Mori, and Elliot Stevenson comes up the ball, brings it back down the court for the Blue Comets. He's going to be swinging around to Harding, back over to Larson. Jordan Duncan, the three-point sniper, just off the front of the rim. Vikings come up with the rebound. Yeah, I think one of the keys here for Blue Comets is definitely going to be getting into their shooter's hands. You have, uh, was it last year he was the champion? And Parker Hanson was in second place? I think it was the other way. Was it the other way around? No, I think I think Jordan won it. But anyway, In the Ralph the Miller point, tournament, yes. Yeah, you have the three-point winner for uh, the Ralph Miller contest right there. He's really good at shooting the ball. He may have started off a little cold right there, but they're looking at it getting it there. Then they have two slashers in Elliott and Rhett. So if that three-point game isn't working, they can hit the paint really hard. Harding brought the ball up, swinging it around to Custer. Custer looking middle, gets it to Smith. Down in the middle to... Stevenson wasn't expecting that. Back in the middle of the Stevenson. Again, still not expecting it. Red Smith coming in hot with some of those passes as Hutto brings it all the way down the court and scores for two. First points of the game for the Vikings, and Graham steals the inbound. Smith hops right in the way in between Morey and Graham. I Blue Comets now with the ball. I know this technically isn't their first game because they had the Jamboree, but it's looking like a little bit of first game jitters to me. What about you, Wood? It's, they're definitely brushing off some rust, that's for sure. Blue Comets throw the ball away, get it tipped away by the Vikings, and now Graham bringing the ball up the court after Gibson declares the ball. Maury, sorry, that is Hutto, back out to, that's going to be Shelton for a three-point attempt, no good. Graham, high flyer, gets up, pulls it back out for a three, and that's going to be good. 5-0 lead for the Vikings early on here in the first quarter. Yeah, and that was just a good play right there. Getting the rebound, passing it out. Duncan, great look down low to Smith. Elliott Stevenson, I don't know if he just didn't see him on the opposite block, but decided to dish it out to the corner three where Duncan made the right play. Hutto, pump fakes. Keeps it, crossover, back up to Graham. Now to Morey. Morey back to Graham. Graham, uh, floater, right hand, no good. It's going to be a foul, I believe, on Elliot Stevenson. So just from watching the little bit of this game so far, watching some JV and almost all of the C-team game, they really like getting the ball to the corner of the court. Just in that pocket right there, moving the ball around, getting it there. Pump fake, go to drive down baseline. If they can't get it there, they pass it back out to a shooter. Um, right there, you saw it. Just pump fake, try, went to drive, got the foul. And now he's going to be shooting for two. First shot was good. Second shot to make the lead. Five-point lead for the Vikings. Harding looking to get it in. It looks like the Vikings are in an early press. They have been the last couple plays. And we kind of knew that coming in, talking with head coach Devin Crabtree of the Blue Comets. Um, he had mentioned that the Vikings are really good at the press. They're hardworking kids. They may not lack, or they may lack in some technical skills, but what they lack in that, they make up for in hard work and, and pressing the ball. Yeah, their hustle shows through here, especially with that rebound. I believe that was Graham getting up there to grab that over one of our taller guys. I mean, just. High class of athleticism there. He's a good two inches, three inches shorter than him, and he just gets the rebound. Hutto in the corner, back up to Graham at the top of the key. Hands it off to Mori. Mori drives middle, goes up, takes the charge, is Larson Custer right in the middle, and that's going to be a Blue Comet basketball. Mori did a great job crossing over, trying to go for the floater in the paint, but it's always difficult and a little dangerous when you got people standing right in the middle of the lane. Harding to throw the ball in. Blue Comets not having too hard of a time breaking the press. Smith 
Now to Stevenson. Stevenson up and under and one. Elliot Stevenson with the left hand. Great look by Rhett Smith yeah, from the offside. Great look, side. tough finish from Elliott Stevenson. That left hand isn't always easy for most people. Especially the up and under. Yeah, with the foul on the under two. I mean, just looked like a professional play there by Elliott Stevenson. Absolutely. Luke Hunt. Blue Comets now only down by three. Stevenson trying to cut it down to a two-point deficit. Off the rim. Vikings come up with the ball. Hutto and Graham both going for it, kind of bump into each other. Graham now setting up play for the Vikings. Taking the screams, Hutto. Gibson popping back out, gets it over to Shelton as he drives baseline and dishes it right to Smith as he takes it the length of the court, goes up and good. Now only down by one, Blue Comets staying in the game. Nothing much to say there. That's one of the silencer plays that you kind of have. Cuts the momentum most likely. Just takes a loose ball, not really even loose, just a bad pass, takes it down the court and scores. Shelton. Driving middle, and that's Russ Smith now taking the charge. That's two offensive fouls for the Vikings here just in the first quarter. I don't know if they didn't just watch any film, but if you're coming in to play against the Blue Comets, you've got to know Devin Crabtree loves those just charges in the middle. He's telling those guys to take that all the time, and we, pract we practiced it and practiced for that stuff. If you're back here from the girls' game earlier, you notice that the Blue Comets also – uh, took several charges in the girls' game as well. Uh, and so that was kind of a, a big thing there that helped to determine the game as Caden Seamster gets called for the travel. Vikings throw the ball in. Graham gets it to Hutto. Deep three off right. Not much to say about that. Just, I guess, a range check. Yeah. Blue Comic crowd, student section, really giving him a bit of an earful there. Smith kicks it over to Duncan. Duncan to Seamster. Gets it a little behind him as Seamster was really trying to push it forward. Man, he's just having a little bit of a slow start. But once he gets going, he always gets going good. So I'm waiting for that moment, that little click of fire in his eyes, you know. With this press that um, – with the press that – Winfield has, they uh, are, it, it seems like they're setting themselves up a little bit because with athleticism as Caden Seamster has, we saw him multiple times last year breaking a press and uh, getting the dunk uh, just on the other end. He does a great job of, of staying on the back side of the press and waiting for the open ball and just cr and driving it to the hole as hard as he can. Not only just athleticism, but the intelligence you have in like Rhett Smith, for example, and Elliot Stevenson in the last couple of plays of breaking the press. They're just sitting down in the corner in the block. I mean, they move the ball around so the guy in the middle can't do much and they get the easy layup. I think that's four of our six points has come from the fast break off of press. Lars Custer, first free throw off the front of the rim. Seems like everybody's a bit short on free throws tonight. Still six to seven. Three minutes and 20 seconds left in the first quarter, despite what the scorebook says. There we go, there's a fix. Lars now off the back of the rim. Hanging a little left there. Hutto trying to get past Custer. Gives it up to Mori and he drives, kicks it out. Back to Mori up top. That's going to be a charging foul on Caden Seamster. Not charging, my bad. A blocking Block. foul yeah, on there you go. Caden his, Seamster. His feet just weren't set in time. That's, that's all you got to say. He jumped over. He was trying to get it. Just wasn't set in time. Looks like for the Vikings, we also have Adam, or sorry, Aiden Loeb in the game. Graham now with the ball. Driving middle. Larson Custer gets a blocking foul. That's, that's tough. Larson looked like he was pretty far in front of uh, Graham there, but the officials say otherwise. Yeah, that really is just a tough call. Larson's playing good defense there. Graham just throws his body into him a little bit, creates the contact to get the blocking call. Stevenson guarding Hutto. Graham now guarded by Custer, driving middle. Gets hooked up there, jump ball. Rhett Smith with a hand on the ball. 
as him and Graham get tangled up a bit. Now it's going to be Blue Comet basketball. Yeah, I think Blue Comets are starting to figure out that offense. I mean, they put up seven early, haven't been much around now. They've kind of figured out that they love those corners, pump fakes, going to drive middle. Seems to be looking for. Crossing half court. Not the only thing he's crossing there, Wood. <laughs> Custer going up and under, gets fouled going up. Frustrated at himself for not finishing that, but, hey, you know, great players are going to hold themselves to a higher standard. True. All he has to do now is just go out there and hit the two and make it up for it, you know. Harding back into the game. He's going to take over for Jordan Duncan. Let the three-point sniper rest a little bit. Get him ready to go. Custer for his second shot. Ball game tied up. Now, Luke Thomas take the lead. Exactly what he needed to do there was just hit those two, make up for the miss, keep it going. Luke Thomas now in a full court press just like Winfield. That's going to be a three point attempt by Maury. Seamster, look ahead. He throws it back in. Goes way out of bounds. Ellie Stevenson looked like he just led him a little too much there. I feel I gotta feel bad a, a little bit for Seamster. You know, he really he really he wanted really that breakaway. It, yeah. I mean, but at the same time you gotta look at this and just say to Elliot, just like carry it down, man. Make that defender make a decision. It's a two on one. Make him stay on Caden or could push towards you, because if he pushes towards you, you pass it off, he stays on Caden, you just hit the layup. Larson Custer, great defense, gets it to Maury. Maury drives into Rhett Smith and he gets a blocking call and Maury's going to go to the line for two. That's, that's Rhett Smith's second personal foul. Yeah, that's a tough call there. He looks set from my perspective, but I mean, ref's got a different perspective. They called the game. Can't be hard on them. They're, they have a tough job. I mean, it's really that. Pardon me, that's Rhett's first foul. I thought he had a foul earlier in the game, but apparently not. Christian Maury, his first shot is up. And that rattles out. It's unfortunate. Makes your teeth hurt when that happens. Your teeth hurt? Well, <laughs> you know what they I've say. I've never heard that saying before. <laughs> Maury, second shot. In and out again, almost the exact same rattle. Stevenson now with the ball, bringing it up. Seamster looking to do something with it. Still has this dribble, gets it poked away by Loeb. Gives it up to Custer, guarded by Graham. Now to Smith, over to Harding. Short right. corner to Stevenson. Cross the way, not quite high enough. Stolen by Shelton as he takes it down. Gets it over to Loeb as he drives baseline to Graham. Now to Shelton again for a three-point attempt. And that's going to rattle in and out. That's going to be over the back call on Kellen Gibson as Stevenson goes up for the rebound. We were talking about how they like to hustle, and he's showing it there. Just sometimes hustle leads to fouls. It happens. You just got to clear your mind and get back in it. You know, that's why I always fouled out. I was just hustling. Too. Right. <laughs> Already in the double bonus. For those of you who are not caught up uh, on Kansas basketball this year, we there's no longer a single bonus. It only goes straight to a double bonus in, uh, in basketball now. So once a team gets to, I believe, is it five, six fouls, uh, it, five. it is automatic two shot attempt from the free throw line. You know, I kind of love and hate that rule change. I mean, it's nice during this, like, moment right here, just first quarter, just getting the double bonus right. But when it comes down to the nitty gritty in the fourth quarter, you do that. You're hoping for them just miss and a rebound fast instead of just them getting two shots. Blue Comets. Defending, looks like there was a foul on the play. Gonna be two shots now. The Vikings are in the double bonus in the first quarter at that. Hey, a lot of physicality going we're talking on here. About it. It's just the hustle plays. I mean, I think it, if I remember right, half the Blue Comets fouls are just from blocking charges anyways. First shot up, Deontay. I'm not even going to try to pronounce his last name. Caudillo. Better than what I was going to say. <laughs> Again, <laughs> Winfield fans, I'm sorry. I, I did not get the uh, heads up on these. Off the back of the rim, Wukong has come up with the rebound. You know what? This is what my mother always says. Don't be unprepared. <laughs> 
Well, you got a point there. Smith with the ball, gets it over to Baker. Colby Baker over to the corner now for Stevenson. Did we mention Jalen Duncan's in? I, I almost couldn't tell it was him. Him yeah. and Jordan look so much alike. The I didn't brothers even realize there. that he came in for a second until he was passing the ball around, got it in his hands. That's a freshman right there who's going into play. Chris Harding for three. Looked beautiful Great off the shot. hands. He looked even better going in. No timeouts yet in the first quarter here. I mean, this close of a game, we're kind of going back and forth. I can understand, but at the same time, they haven't scored a point in good four minutes, I think, somewhere around there. Blue Comets in another press as the Vikings break that relatively easily. Pump fake, pull up three. That's Evan Hutto for the three-pointer. And like we talked about earlier, you got to make the offender make a decision, and that's what he forced Chris into right there. Is that you had to guard two guys, and he didn't know if he was going to make the pass or not. Forced him into a decision. Just unlucky choice, I guess. Stevenson down low, back to Harding. Harding drives middle, jumps, goes up off the back of the rim. Smith with the rebound puts it back for two for the four-point lead. Graham now. Breaking the double team. We have Maury bringing it down. Shelton now up and under, misses. Jalen Duncan gets the ball, gets it to Harding. Harding to Stevenson, up, no, that's good, but. Gotta see if the refs count it. The horn, where ref already waved it off. Horn went off before the ball left his hand. Unfortunate, it did look great though, I'll give him that. Incredible shot, even if it was just going into quarter. Our first break after the first quarter, we're going to go ahead and take a two commercial break. We'll be right back right after this. Savings Bank is a platinum underwriter here at the Fire Escape Coffee House. Home Savings Bank has been serving the Chanute area since 1886. Customer owned and customer driven, Home Savings Bank located at 214 North Lincoln Avenue in Chanute, Kansas is here to serve all your banking needs. Whether your needs are checking, savings account, safety deposit box, lending, or online banking, Home Savings Bank is here to help. Home Savings Bank is located on the internet at homesavingschanute.com. Home Savings Bank is committed to the youth of Southeast Kansas and helping the men Industries at the Fire Escape Coffee House. CHS Blue Pride Marching Band. That's a that's kind of a tongue twister there, uh, giving a little the fans a little bit of entertainment in between quarters as. The Vikings start out with the ball to begin the second quarter. We got quick little foul by Colby Baker. Looks like a little reach around there. That's kind of rough because when you're working in that post, you, you use your hands to your advantage, and he kind of just had him on his hips there. The rest was just waiting to make the call, it looked like. Now, if you have noticed, actually, you probably won't notice because we can only see it here in person. At the end of each quarter, the foul tracker resets. So now both teams are now at zero, well, it, with the exception of Schnoot, who now has their first foul of the quarter. Turnaround fadeaway by Maury, way all right. See, that's just what we call low percentage shots right there. It was I mean. a pretty move, he just couldn't finish. Jordan Duncan to Lars. Jordan and Jalen both in the game at the same time. Reminds me of Larson, uh, his Cam. older brother, yeah. Larson Cam out there. Harding to Custer, taking the screen over to Baker. Baker drives baseline, gets it back out to Custer. Pump fakes, swings it to Jordan Duncan. Custer now looking for something. Jalen, as short as he is, kind of posting up on the offset block. Baker, hey. turn around, up, no good. It's just that effort. I, even if Colby missed that, that's tough. But he's just showing the effort in there. And you were talking about Jalen posting up in the bottom. I'd let him do that. Have you seen that kid? He's buff as can be. He's, he can handle him down there. Right. Like he's good. Rebound by Christian Mori. Picking up the fouls. Number 13, Colby Baker. 
That's his first of the – sorry, second. second. Yeah, second. Second of the quarter at that. Hey, like, like I said, he's just showing effort out there. It's kind of hard to be mad at him. Gibson looking down low up. And two is good for Aiden Loeb. You just saw kind of a lapse on defense there. He stepped back a little bit. Wasn't really ready for the pass. Got beat there. Jalen gets it to Jordan. Baker back to Jordan. Off the front of the rim. Loeb with the rebound. Gets it over to Mori. He's looking up. Nothing. Backside gives him the wide open, but Hutto decides not to. Graham now taking the screen from Gibson. Over, up, and under, and that's going to be Christian Mori with a great little hesitation in midair. Hey, Jalen Duncan put good defense there. As a coach, you can't be really upset. That was a tough bucket made. Tied ball game now. Harding to Custer. Duncan back to Custer. Custer, three-pointer. It's good. Larson being very patient with his three-point attempts, and for good reason. Yeah, I mean, there's a reason why his sophomore year he shoots 47% from the three-point line. It's because he makes the right shot choices, and like you said, he's just patient with it. I completely missed that. That was a Justin Braden's microphone. <laughs> My apologies. You didn't have to do me like that. I, I couldn't hear you. <laughs> I put it away because my allergies are bad, man. I don't want to have my snot in the mic. <laughs> Vikings to throw the ball in. Loeb to sit for the Vikings. Looks like we got Shelton back in. That's going to be Hutto for the three-point attempt. That's in and out as Harding picks up the rebound. Stevenson in the ball game now. Behind the back, gets it back to Harding. Back to Stevenson, and he drives. He gets a little blocking foul, a little hip check there by Evan Hutto. That's going to be Blue Comet out of bounds on the baseline. One thing you got to give these refs credits about, they're keeping it clean. I mean, they're calling everything they see, keeping tensions low. Tipped inbounds play. Christian Mori got his hand on the ball there as Custer was trying to hit Duncan in the corner. Stevenson. I'm not even sure what to make of that play. Lars Custer tried to get into Stevenson in the middle. Morey tipped the ball. Back to Custer as he stepped in bounds. Custer to Duncan. Duncan made the three. So much happened within two seconds there. That's basketball for you, man. One of the more fast-paced sports. Shelton gets his ball tipped. Hutto to Graham. Graham pump fakes, drives baseline. Larson straight up. No good from Graham. Great defense by Larson Custer. Smith to Custer, now to Stevenson, and he drives middle, back to Duncan. Duncan, great ball movement to Harding. Stevenson for a three-point attempt, off the back of the iron. Smith with the rebound, and they're fighting for it between Smith and Shelton. And that's gonna be a foul on Shelton there, tough, tough yeah, foul tough there. Foul. I mean, it, like we were talking about, it was the effort plays. These teams are very good at showing effort, showing hustle, and that, that's gonna result in a high fouling game, to be honest. But what my problem was is Elliott's shot selection there. I mean, he was getting closed out on pretty fast. I almost would have liked him to see that just that one more pass, the coaches said. Just that one more pass, you know? He would have had someone open or maybe get it to the block guy, make him be able to maybe do some work. Would have looked better. Shelton now has to take a seat as we get Loa back in the game. Hutto, three-point attempt off wide left. Maury from the top of the key, and he gets the three. Hey, that's just saying calm under pressure. That looked nice from him coming off the hand straight in. Cuts the lead to only three now. Stevenson middle gets it out to Custer. Custer hesitates there. Stevenson up with the right, no good. I do believe Stevenson is left-handed, so that right hand just didn't quite have the power there. Charging foul on Mori. I believe that's his second offensive foul. During and that's going to be set the second charge that Lars Custer has taken this half. All right. Coach is going to be happy with him. That's all I got to say. Absolutely. 
Um, I was talking at the break really fast with one of the guys behind us who was in Elliott Stevenson's grade, and he was saying that he's actually right-handed, but he's just really good with both hands. Gotta so, love that. I think it was just the kind of the kind of just excited going up. Larson gets it to Stevenson. Stevenson goes up right hand, just a little strong there. Vikings now with the ball, looking for Mori down low. He gets the ball. Will step through right hand way off. Loeb. Three-point attempt is a bit short, too. Looks like Maury just misstepped there and almost had to just throw it at the rim, unfortunately. Smith cuts in the lane, and he gets two. Rhett Smith, way to run the floor. Wide open from, I believe that was Elliot Stevenson. Yeah, that was very unfortunate for sure. He had, he had a good move there. I mean, there was good defense on him. He made a better move to get through. It just, like you said, it seemed like he got tripped up there. Loeb. Forced a shot. Larson strips it from Hutto, and he goes up for the floater. Bounces around, and it eventually falls. Blue Comets seem to be making all the right choices these last couple series. El Boogie just looking like he's back in his prime. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. What are you talking about? He is in his prime. He's been in his prime for a while. Hutto now with the ball. What Low ebb right through the hands, out of bounds. Blue Comet basketball. What's the saying, Wood? We stay on the rise? Is that, is that what he is? He's staying on the rise? Something like that. He's an old soul, that's for sure. Harding to bring the ball up for the Blue Comets. Custer, three-pointer, way short. Stevenson tries to save it. Looks like it was out of bounds before he even got to it. Larson not exactly sure. What happened there? Not a traditional Lars Custer air ball. It's really not, but, I mean, shooter's going to shoot. I right. Guess. I guess that's the way to put it. Graham Great. a little around the back. Great Maury, three-point shot in and out. Great little uh, pop there, but unfortunately didn't fall. This game would be so much different if uh, Winfield just liked to take their time just a little bit more. Smith driving baseline up and under reverse layup for the Blue Comets. Making gotta, a nine point lead here. Gotta give some respect there. Great move by Rhett Smith. Not Hazlitt. <laughs> Shout out to Rhett Hazlitt though. <laughs> if you're watching, Hutto, one on one with Smith. Did I say Hazlitt again though? No. Okay, good. Just a little bit of a cold black. Blocking foul by Larson Custer. Unfortunately, moving too much against Graham there rather than with Graham. Jalen Duncan, going to check in for the Blue Comets. Didn't quite make it to the scores table. Referees told him, go back. Larson's going to take a seat. Well-deserved rest for him. He really, he really has been playing a good game so far, despite the couple blocking fouls on him. He's been playing good. Maury with the ball. Get to Gibson. Now to Hutto. Hutto as he slips. And falls there. Gibson takes the screen. Guarded by Harding. Looking around for Maury. Great job dropping down with the pass. For by Harding. Second, I thought it was the preseason NBA tournament with how he was slipping on the floor. Well, <laughs> what does that say about the NBA? <laughs> I don't know. I can tell you they don't like those courts. <laughs> Gibson, top of the key. Loeb with the shot. That's going to be a little right. Maury with the rebound. Spins around, up and under. Again, just loses the ball in midair. Jalen Duncan with the left hand, and that's good. That's going to be his first two points as a Blue Comet. And Jalen Duncan slipping out of his shoes, but he hustles back. Look, he's beating Graham there. Graham to Gibson. Gibson looking underneath for Loeb, but decides to give it to Hutto for a three-point attempt at the buzzer, and that's no good. And that's going to leave us at 28-17 here in the first half. We're going to go ahead and take a handful of commercial breaks. We'll be right back uh, to begin the second half.
And now, ladies and gentlemen, for your halftime entertainment, we'd like for you to welcome the Chanute High School cheer team. Tonight's routine choreographed by our coach, Miss Zoe. At Human Touch at your bank, at Community National Bank and Trust, you'll be able to talk with a real person. Community National Bank is small enough to know you, yet big enough to offer the best products. Your busy lifestyle requires banking options like mobile deposit and people-to-people -people pay. With locations in Southeast Kansas and Southwest Missouri, Community National Bank and Trust can help keep your finances safe and your spending smarter. Online at MyBankCNB.com. Community National Bank and Trust. Federally insured. Locally awesome. Member FDIC. Okay, let's go again. Tell me about your vision. <laughs> At the end of the day, it's your classic coming of age story. Can I need more shipping labels? All the gig speed, fiber fueled internet you need to take whatever and make it big. Sparklight Internet, a stronger connection. The Fire Escape Coffee House is dedicated to high school and college students. Our mission is for every student in Southeast Kansas to know they have value, they are loved, and that they have a place. We are not a church, but we are motivated by the love God has for all of us. The Fire Escape opened in 1998 and is open every Friday and Saturday night for high school and college age students. During the week, the Fire Escape is open to the public Tuesday through Friday mornings for coffee, ketchups, or small groups like Bible studies. The Fire Escape Coffee House is proud to partner with the Schnute High School Tech Classes on this broadcast. KFEX 93.1 FM and Comet Vision are excited to partner with Dr. Grant Gastineau. Dr. Gastineau graduated from Chanute High School and is committed to supporting the activities of the youth of Chanute. Thank you, Dr. Gastineau. We appreciate your support. Cardinal Drugstore, located at 103 East Main in downtown Chanute, is a small town farm. Cardinal Drugstore, located at 103 East Main in downtown Chanute, is a small town farm and gift store, which includes an old fashioned soda fountain. They specialize in compounds and vaccines. They also supply many types of medical items. Cardinal Drugstore is your one stop shop for all of your health care needs. KFEX and Comet Vision are so grateful for your support. From kickoff to the final lap, from peewees to the weekend pros, our team of doctors can help with the diagnosis and treatment of sports-related injuries. Wherever you are in your sports journey, Labette Health Sports Medicine team has the training, experience, and skill to repair, restore, and renew. For more information about Southeast Kansas' leading orthopedic and sports medicine program, go to labettehealth.com. 
The Medicine Shop Pharmacy, located right across the street from Royster Middle School in downtown Chinook, is in the business of making you feel better, faster. With three licensed pharmacists, the Medicine Shop has the knowledge to know the right drugs and the proper dosage to ensure your safety. If you're not quite up to your game, Medicine Shop offers delivery to your door. The Medicine Shop, a proud underwriter of the Chinook Blue Commons. Unbelievable! Sparklight is unveiling unlimited internet for just $25 a month. Get reliable 100 meg internet for just $25 a month for 12 months with unlimited data. That's unlimited internet. Call 877-469-3057 or visit sparklight.com slash savings. Sparklight, a new breed in high speed. Welcome back to Comet Vision, right back here at Shinu High School. We apologize for all the silence throughout the halftime here. We uh, do have to be very careful with the background music. If, if there's no dialogue over it, we can get copywritten uh, strikes. 
and they can pull our live stream down. So a lot of times we do end up, unfortunately, having to stay silent. Blue Comets to start the second half of the ball. Before Elliot Stevenson. Before we get too far in it, what do you think the keys are for the Blue Comets to sustain the lead and Winfield to get the lead back? You know, I think the Blue Comets are doing a great job with pushing the ball, uh, especially through a press. Uh, as Seamster scores right here, but uh, really just taking their time. They're doing a great job of moving the ball uh, quickly and efficiently, and I think if they just keep that up, they have the game in the bag. Shelton gets it to Gibson. Seamster tries to hit it off him, but they both go at it at the same time. Stevenson Good to Duncan dish. to Smith. Great, like I said, great ball movement, great way of seeing each other on the floor. And uh, you continue to do that, and you're gonna you're gonna win games. Graham getting hugged by Larson. I believe that might be his third personal foul here in the game. Once again, the foul numbers as team has reset for the quarter. Lucam is picking up that first foul of the half. Graham driving right. A little push off, no call though. Maury back over to Shelton. Hutton, Hutto rather, now. Maury again to Gibson. Gibson looking to Maury. He spins back to Gibson. Oh. Wide open three, right off the front of the rim. They're, they're lucky there, you can't give anybody, especially in this day and age, that open of a three. Larson, bad pass. Graham, even worse pass. I don't know exactly what happened there, but. Hey, that's just, that's good defense from Larson coming out of that. Being able to cover up that one on two and make it more of a one on one, to be honest. Larson taking a quick break early on in the fur in the second half. I think Crabtree's just wanted to talk to him about some stuff. I, I figure we see him in pretty soon. In the broadcast world. Duncan. Taking his time, giving it to Stevenson. Now to Harding. Smith making his way backside to Duncan in the corner, back to Harding. Harding pump fakes, drives middle, dishes it to Stevenson as he goes up real quick. Hey, that's with contact. You can't do nothing but respect that shot right there. That's a uh, great, what's the word I'm thinking of? Great awareness by Stevenson to just not, I don't want to say expect the ball because you, that's a pass you don't always expect. But when you live down low on the block like I have in my day, you just expect just about any pass to come to you. Graham now driving middle. Maury turns, spins, gives it to Graham again. Crossover step back though, nothing going nowhere with it. Maury. Wide open layup, a little bit of a contestant. Uh, contesting by uh, Smith, but I don't think Smith got the ball on that as Caden Seamster fumbles it. I mean, could have had a wide open dunk. Maybe just wipe off those hands a little bit, get back in it. He's been playing football with gloves for a little bit, so right. I don't know if he's used to that. Sweaty palms. <laughs> Shelton now driving middle. You know, that's me on Graham. dates, Wood. Sweaty palms. Stevenson. Graham just bounces right off of him. Brick wall right there. Gets it to Jordan. Now to Seamster. Duncan wide open three. And that's good. Jordan Duncan, I believe his third three-pointer of the game. Just hits that rust off and he's back to normal. I mean, that's really what it is. Started out a little cold. Smith pokes three. the ball away, unfortunately slips. I believe it was three missed threes by Dor uh, Duncan to start it out, but now he's came back with two in a row. That's right. Cooper Lukey in the game. I'd expect him to be pulling a Jordan Duncan at the same time, looking for a bunch of threes. He is smaller in stature, but that kick and shoot, that's for sure. He's a great man to step in and uh, move the ball efficiently as well. Little brother of head coach Devin Crafty blocked shot by Chris Harding. As Chris goes up, gets the block from behind by Maury, but Seamster right there to put it back in. 
Shelton drives the middle, and he's going all the way to the rack. Gets blocked by Lukey. <laughs> Cooper Lukey coming with that block. Standing. A staggering five foot eight. Seamster tries to go up and under. Big Does man not in go the paint in. right there. Cooper Lukey. Hutto with a shot attempt. Again, no good. Blue Comet still up 39-17. They look good in the first half of the three-point shots. Smith uh, in the middle, back out to Seamster. Three-point attempt off the side of the Ooh. backboard. Not a shot you want to see. Well, like I was saying, Winfield looked good in the first half with their three-point attempts when they were just driving baseline, kicking it out top of the key when they take theirs. Gibson's three is going to fall. The good thing about those shots at the top of the key like that, they just have all the time in the world to put one up. Give them time to relax. Cutting the Blue Comets lead to only 19 now. I say only. Yeah. <laughs> Cooper Lukey. Now to Smith. Smith over to Duncan. Harding. Seamster now. Goes up and gets blocked by Maury. Maury's got a little bit of frustration there and as he should, he's had a few missed shots. That, that, that may be the case, but Caden just seems a little off today, man. Chris Harding picks up the offensive foul. A little, uh, a little shove off with the forearm there. Can't really do that, but. Oh, you can't? I couldn't tell by how you play. Oh, well, listen, when you're big bodied, you use it. Shelton driving middle, dishes it off. To Gibson. Gibson's on the ground with Duncan. Gets it out to Hutto. Now to Gibson again. Drives baseline. Kicks it over. Lukey steps in the way. Stripped by Seamster. Now you can't talk about that sequence of defense without talking about Rhett putting his body in the line to try and get the charge. Force the bad pass off to avoid Ooh. the charge. To put it in kind of chaos for that little bit before they uh, eventually came away with the steal. Jordan Duncan's air ball leads to the Vikings coming back. Missed shot by Evan Hutto. We were talking about it coming out of half. It was the patience game is what we were talking about is what's going to keep Blue Comets in this. And they just seem to be forcing it a little bit. Caden Seamster, great job of a little jump stop getting through contact. We're going to go ahead and take a break. Uh, we're going to take, let's see what, how long this timeout is. It's going to be a 30-second timeout. We're going to take a one commercial break. We'll be right back right after this. Blue Comets up by 21 here. 2.13 left in the third quarter. I want to say a relatively open game for the Comets to run away with this. Lukey with the steal. But as we saw in the girls game, they were leading by a substantial amount, and they got pretty close towards the end. So we'll see how this Winfield plays. If they play anything like the girls, it, it could be anyone's game here, even 20 points up. Head coach Devin Crabtree was looking for a certain kind of call. Not exactly sure what he was wanting. I didn't know if he was looking for that 10-second violation or uh, or what. I, it was hard telling. Graham now with the ball. Hands it off to Loeb. Loeb kind of stuck. Back to Graham. Driving baseline. Also stuck. Three-point attempt by Loeb, and that's going to rattle in. Hey, that was at the top of the key. That's where they've been most successful with the three-point shots. That's what I was talking about earlier. Hopefully, for their sake, and unhopefully for our sake, they don't go back to that. Full timeout called by Rob Fields, head coach of Winfield. We're going to go ahead and take it with him. We'll be right back right after these two commercials. KFEX Firescape Radio programming is made possible in part by the underwriting efforts of Sonic Drive-In of Chanute. 
Sonic Drive-In of Chanute does not consider community involvement a sales gimmick or a public relations ploy. They see it as a way to be a good neighbor and as a way to have a positive impact on their community. It is for these reasons that Sonic Drive-In of Chanute is a proud underwriter of KFEX Firescape Radio and the ministry efforts of the entire Firescape ministry to the youth of Chanute. Back right after the timeout break. Blue Comets to throw the ball in. Winfield already coming out in a full court press. I mean, if there's anything to say about their game so far today is they like to speed up this ball. And that's what they're looking for to do in this, this press. I mean, simple as that. Blue Comets are just going to have to hold it and possess the ball a little bit. But Whoa going to say that that's, that's on the line. His foot was on the line is what they're going to say. A little back and forth there from Blue Comets. Chris Harding was trying to tell Jordan Duncan, shoot the ball, you're wide open. But Unfortunately, that, that a confidence wasn't there. I don't we know saw if it wasn't confidence, air ball. but Jordan has a very particular intelligence for the game. As we say that, he gets it's a three, another three-point shot. But he has a very particular intelligence when it comes to the basketball game. And I wonder if he just knew where the score was and wanted to hold that ball a little bit. But then after the pass back, he's kind of like, I have to take this. Trevor Shelton drives to the rim, scores for two. Blue Comets getting it past half court. A little shove by Traven. Oh, pardon me, by uh, Kellen Gibson. Gibson, little uh, hip check there. Right I, I tell you what, you know, when you get old, you start <laughs> losing it. Aren't you recently 30? I We're, don't think you can call yourself old. That's besides the point. Harding with the ball gets it to Seamster, back to Harding. He's Lukey in the corner, but he's trying to get back to the middle there. Lukey, three-point attempt, and that's good. First one of the day, he hits it. Cooper Lukey, a very uh, underrated three-point shooter here for the Blue Comets. Blue Comets, no numbers, as Chris Harding tried going for a steal. Deep three attempt, and it goes in. Gibson, Kellen Gibson for three with the answer. <coughs> Jordan, back to Lukey. Lukey feeling it. In and out oh. off the top of the backboard. He really wanted that shot. <laughs> yeah. I mean, he made the last one. He thought he could make this one again. Not a bad thought process. It's a heat check, I guess we can call it. Drew Graham back in the ball game for the Vikings as Aiden Loeb takes a seat. Graham now with the ball. We see his we've seen his athleticism quite often tonight. Hutto to the rim with the right hand underneath. And that's going to end the third quarter here. We're going to go ahead and take one more commercial break to rest our voice. We'll be right back after this. to local individuals and businesses. Their expertise ranges from basic tax management and accounting services to more in-depth services such as audits, financial statements, QuickBooks support, and payroll. Jared Gilmore and Phillips PA has backed Chanute's youth in all their endeavors from the classroom to extracurricular activities. They're proud to help support the youth of Chanute by underwriting this KFEX broadcast. Beginning the fourth quarter here, eight minutes left in the game. 30 to 47, Blue Comets up by 17. Winfield Vikings not letting that deter them. As Drew Graham 
Gets the ball and gets it to Gibson. Now to Hutto. Hutto guarded deep by Smith. Dude, with that play call sign, I'm just waiting for the lob. <laughs> Shelton now driving with his right hand, kicks it back out to Hutto. Side steps, three point attempt off the front of the rim. Stevenson with the rebound for the Blue Collins. That's tough on his end, but honestly, I wouldn't give that to him twice. I feel like he could make that. That's a tough move for sure. Jalen Duncan in the ball game here. Substantial minutes for the freshman there. We also see Larson Custard. Offensive foul. Three point bucket is no good. That's and rough. It's going to be Viking that a, basketball. That's a beautiful shot coming off Jordan Duncan's hands. So that's just really rough. Foul on Rhett Smith there. Good hands up play by Gibson. For three, and that's going to be good for the Vikings. And that's going to be another full timeout here from Winfield. We're going to go ahead and take a two commercial break. We'll be right back after this. Ordered in Fredonia, Alert Construction Services was founded in Southeast Kansas as a small regional contractor and has now grown into a national heavy industrial construction company with regional offices across the United States. The Alert family is proud of our Southeast Kansas roots because we know that the people of Southeast Kansas make great employees. At Alert, we know that employees are our greatest asset and we're committed to investing in the growth of our employees and our community. Alert Construction Services, proud to support the youth of Southeast Kansas through the Firescape Coffee House and KFEX Firescape Radio. And we're back. Blue Comet still up. 47-33 here in the fourth quarter. As they go to throw the ball in. Winfield still in a slightly different press as they see Blue Comet's set up a, a, a different form of a press breaker and Winfield just backs right off. Blue Comet swing the ball around. Larson almost loses it off of his shoe. Stevenson now gets it to Jalen. Back to Larson. I love this patient offense right here. Just burning some time off. I mean, you, rough, you just came off the seven minute mark of fourth quarter. Larson great timing there on the pump fake. And the and one basket's going to be good. That was a foul on, who was that? That was Christian Mori. That's his third personal foul as Larson goes to the line for a third, for a three-point play. That's just a textbook play there by Larson Kessler, and he's making it count with the extra point going in. 30-second timeout from the Blue Comets. We're going to keep it right here. Uh, it looks like, you know, like I said, coming out of that first timeout, or that re most recent timeout, uh, the Vikings got in a full court press for a moment there, but then shoot showed that they were doing something a little different and they just immediately backed off. Hey, and that's the great thing about Devin Crabtree. He has some sort of genius when it comes to playmaking. I believe at least last year we had three different press breaks and a good like five or six different offense. How the varsity kids remembered it, I don't know but they do great at doing it. I had a great opportunity over Thanksgiving break to sit in on one of Devin Crabtree's practices. And one of the main things that I noticed about his practices is that they're so fast paced. He keeps them fast paced because he wants it to be a game style uh, simulation. He wants it to be realistic for his players. Even if that means uh, you miss a shot, everybody get on the baseline and run a down back real quick. He's, he's constantly making his kids stay in shape Kind of, and it's it's showing off here tonight. It's kind of a reminder of Coach Carter, you know. A little bit, yeah. Samuel L. Jackson out there just making them run for everything. Vikings. Maury, turnaround jumper in and out. That's, Unfortunate. That's tough. Looked like a great shot. He had good space there. Just like you said, in and out. Stevenson down the middle. Goes up left-handed. Off the mark. Jalen Duncan gets it out to his brother. Gets stripped by Evan Hutto, and that's going to be Blue Comet basketball. Way to get in there by Jalen Duncan and get the rebound. He's a hustle player for sure. I mean, that's what Devin Crabtree, Devin Crabtree likes. Um, 
one thing that he always emphasized from my two years of playing there and what I've seen from this year is playing a fluid five kind of basketball where not really positions. Like, it's a positionless basketball to where you can have a, power, a point forward. We don't really have a center. Everybody kind of stays out on the arc, just moves, makes cuts. That's why you see them so fast-paced. Absolutely. Chris Harding in for the Blue Comets. Stevenson goes in, gets fouled going up. He's going to go to the line for two as well. Jordan Duncan taking a seat for Chanute here. Crabtree looking up and down his bench, trying to figure out who he's wanting to send in. Elliot Stevenson's first shot is up, and it's good. Blue Comets. About 50% from the free throw line tonight. I think every both both team actually both teams actually have struggled a bit making free throws. Um, I would agree with that statement. That's for sure. Stevenson's second shot is good. Between him and Larson Kester, uh, they both have been kind of holding the Blue Comets in this. Graham with the ball hands it off to Hutto. Now to Shelton as he drives to the rim, kicks it back out to Graham for a three-point attempt. Sh way short. We've seen a lot of air balls tonight as Graham picks up a frustration foul on Rhett Smith. If I'm the Winfield coach, I know one thing comes on tomorrow's practice. Three-point shooting and most likely running. <laughs> Luke Comets right in the middle. Elliot Stevenson through contact, flexing. Talk about it earlier, bro. It's a big brick wall. That's You're going to try be... to make contact with him. you got to make sure it's a lot of contact. That's going to be a foul on Evan Hutto. As Elliot Stevenson again goes to the line for a three-point play. And that's going to be good. Increasing the lead to 28. Pardon me, 18, not 28. My math is way off. What am I? 22 is the <laughs> Now we're back down to 20. I don't know. What am I, what am I saying? <laughs> You're a computer science teacher, not a math teacher. That's don't worry. Right. <laughs> 30 second timeout. I believe on Winfield. We're going to go ahead and take a 30 second break as well. We'll be right back right after this. Blue Comets back in the game here, starting with the ball. Another pe press breaker and another foul on Evan Hutto right out of the gate. That's just a sloppy foul. I mean, I understand fouling to try and get back in the game. As much as I dislike doing that, I understand it, but you can't be doing that five minutes in. Uh, well, five minutes left in the, uh, in the fourth. It's a lot of time left just for them to run away with the game if we were doing this Especially early. with Elliott Stevenson at the line. Yeah. He's in the double bonus. Whereas we should probably just call it the bonus now. Yeah, I think that's what it, they do call it, but I just wasn't going to correct you. Right. I think for everybody listening at home, it makes more sense to just call it the double bonus for to remember. Vikings pick up the ball. Hutto drives right in. Little jump stop. Back to Mori. Three-point attempt. Off the front of the rim. Kind of rolls around a bit. Smith with a... Rebound, and he gets fouled. They're trying to get the jump ball there, but they were pretty aggressive in there. Tag teaming him a little bit, and just reaching in on his arms. Oh, they will call it a jump, actually. Now, we were talking about calling Devin Crabtree a little bit of a Coach Carter, remember. Um, kind of reminds me a little bit more about it when he's over there in his dress clothes. Right. Stevenson with the ball. Gets it to Custer. Back to Stevenson, He's trying to swing it around. Drew Graham picks up yet another foul. 
my problem with it starting out this late, like I said, well, this early, like I said, is they can run away with the game just with the free throws. And well, then, and not only that, they're also going to just prolong the game itself. That That's true because that really sucks. I remember I think it was Ottawa last year we went to, and that game went on like an extra 10 minutes just because of that. Right. And the other thing is your best players are going to start getting really close to foul tro uh, fouling out, and you don't want that in a comeback. Blue Comets. Another timeout. That's going to be a full timeout. We're going to get to take a two commercial commercial break with them. We'll be right right after this. Believable. Sparklight is unveiling unlimited internet for just $25 a month. Get reliable 100 meg internet for just $25 a month for 12 months with unlimited data. That's unlimited internet. Call 877-469-3057 or visit sparklight.com slash savings. Sparklight, a new breed and high speed. We're back right after the timeout. Vikings bringing it in. Blue Comets backing their defense off just a little bit. Drew Graham bringing it across half court now for the Vikings. Guarded pretty closely by Chris Harding the third. Graham thought he got stripped. Turns out to be a foul on Rhett Smith. Smith in a bit of disbelief there, and I can uh, I can fully agree with that, but it is what it is. Throwing the ball in as Hutto gets it over to Graham. Back to Hutto, looking deep for Maury, and he gets it knocked away as he tried to spin back in. Looks like he just hit Larson Custer with his arms and just lost the ball. Elliot Stevenson gets fouled down the court, and he's going to go to the line for two. And my point's coming in here about the fouling out your best players. <laughs> Number 15, that would be, who's that, Wood? I don't got the Gibson, roster. Kellen Gibson. Kellen Gibson, he's made a lot of the threes tonight, and he's already on four fouls. And in high school, it's five fouls before you're out. Absolutely. In dangerous territory, territory with still two, four and a half minutes left. Yeah. Stevenson. Off the mark. Over the back on Maury. Chris Harding got in there. Now Harding and Stevenson are just swapping places. As coaching, I can understand being frustrated with your kids here, being down this deep. But at the same time, you got to take a look at your coaching style and realize what position you put them in by letting just Elliot Stevenson rack up these free throws. Looks like there's a bit of miscommunication there. Some of these students still, uh, still very used to the one and one. And that was the original shot was only Stevenson's first shot. Loeb jump shots way short. Smith with the rebound, bringing the ball up the court himself. Now, one bit of basketball intelligence, I guess you could say, is learning that threes aren't always the best thing. Like, especially with four minutes left, with it deficit, de deficit, des. I'm not even going to say that word. Deficit. I already, I already messed it up twice. <laughs> um, but twos are a good, viable way to get back, especially if you end up causing a stop. It's just something they need to look at is not forcing bad shots, not forcing threes, but looking at quick drives into the bus basket. I can't talk today, Wood. Let me just go ahead and mute your microphone. Yeah. I'm just kidding. Um, Stevenson bringing their lead up to 24 now. 59-35. Once again, this whole broadcast, aside from myself, is being ran by students right here at Chanute High School in our 
television broadcasting class? You're pretty much a student, let's be honest. Okay. Maury with a little step back. He gets fouled by Caden Seamster. And Maury's going to go to the line. I believe he's going to go to the line for three free throw shots. Wood, aren't you technically getting your master's degree right now? We're not talking about that right well, now. Well, I'm just pointing out, technically this is a student-ran broadcast if you are. Chanute High School student-ran <laughs> broadcast. Maury, it's first shot. His foot was on the line, and that shot will not count. Caden Seamster, we saw him pointing at his foot the entire time. That's tough. <laughs> Maury not even paying attention. Seamster still taking a peek at the line there. That's stuff. I ref third and fourth grade kids, and that's stuff <laughs> they don't even do. Off the line, Granted, off they the mark. Take, like two steps back because they right. jump, but. Maury should have been one for two. Now it's 0 for two. Let's see if he can make his third one. Third shot attempt is good. One for three. Got a new body in for the Vikings. I believe that is Dane Chatham, the only person on this roster with the number 21. Great number, by the way, not for any particular reason, except for the fact that that was my number back in the day. Caden Seamster for the 30-yard reception. I thought we were supposed to be an unbiased broadcast. <laughs> For the 30-yard reception on the court. Smith right through his hands, gets it to Hutto. That's the right call there by the ref. I missed the call completely. They call it a carry because he's dribbling, took that little pause in the air, took the dribble on. It's not the NBA, it's high school. Makes get sense. Called in that. Larson to take a seat. Harding to throw the ball and gets it to Smith. Back to Harding. Seamster over to Bilby. Landon Bilby now in the game. Just noticed he snuck in. Smith cutting to the rim. Gets fouled going up by Chatham. And Smith's going to go to the line for two. You're too busy being biased about your number coming in that you miss Landon Bilby. Listen. <laughs> when I see the number... Yeah, I'm going to no recognize defense there. it. No defense there. Smith, his first shot's good. In America, we do proven guilty, but you were just guilty from the start there. That's a matter of opinion. <laughs> Allegedly, right? Rhett Smith, second shot attempt, also good. Cooper Lukey back in the game for Rhett Smith. And Carson Spurrier. Carson Spurrier also in the game. The is he oh, a junior? Cohen Wheeler. Cohen and, Wheeler. And Colby Baker. You're, we're missing everyone. All the original starters out. Going to finish the last three and a half minutes here with some key bench players. Vikings also have some. Uh, Hustle play coming out by Carson bench Spurrier. Players in. He's been hitting the gym recently. I think he's just a little too strong there. Carson Spurrier. I have a good feeling about Carson this season. Going to make some great, uh, going to have some great minutes for the Blue Comets. What height do they have him listed at, you know? Spurrier, six foot two. Six foot two. I he's can been, see that. He's been getting some muscle mass on him, too. He's been hitting the gym a lot. Hutto for three. Going to be a great power forward for the team. That's 30 sure. second timeout for the Blue Comets. We're going to go ahead and take that 30 second timeout because I need a drink. <laughs> we'll be right back right after this. Home Savings Bank is a platinum underwriter here at the Fire Escape Coffee House. Home Savings Bank has been serving the Chanute area since 1886. Customer owned and customer driven, Home Savings Bank located at 214 North Lincoln Avenue in Chanute, Kansas is here to serve all your banking needs. Whether your needs are checking, savings account, safety deposit box, lending, or online banking, Home Savings Bank is here to help. Home Savings Bank is located on the internet at homesavingschanute.com. Home Savings Bank is committed to the youth of Southeast Kansas and helping the ministries at the Fire Escape Coffee House. Mm -hmm. 
Blue Comets back in. Three minutes left in the game here. Crabtree reaching deep into his bench. Get some of these kids some minutes. One thing to notice is that on Crabtree's roster, he does have three freshmen on his varsity team. And from what I've seen, they're all three good players. I mean, Jalen Duncan came out, played substantial minutes today. Work Olsen can shoot the lights out. And from what I've seen, Lawrence Shaney's been pretty good at facilitating the ball. Absolutely, all three, all three freshmen uh, do a great job at just moving the ball around, uh, just being an extra man on the court that's not gonna try to do anything too crazy. Landon Bilby, second shot is good as well. Another player we don't give enough credit to right there. Landon Bilby. Great hustle player. Hutto brings the ball up, going also to the rim and gets another little carry on his hesitation. You think he would have learned from earlier. That's about the same thing he did. Just He's a little He's probably been faster. doing that for years now. Baker gets the ball in just barely before that five-second call. Oh, I was wanting him to drive, get a little point forward in there. Looking like a LeBron. Bilby to Wheeler. Now to Lukey. Driving baseline. A little offensive foul. Cooper Lukey's about to get some free throws. Oh, offensive foul. Never offensive mind. My bad. Foul. <laughs> I thought there was a reach in there. Didn't really click. Looks like that was on Colby Baker. Third foul of the game for Baker. Did you see what they called? Was it a legal screen? I I didn't see it, unfortunately. Gibson. Gets it over to Chatham. Chatham. Over to a new number and to a new number. 12, 10. 12. Out there we have Jeremiah Anderson. Number 10, we have Yates Gilliland. Chatham has it thrown right off his foot. It's going to be Blue Comet basketball. And I was watching Jeremiah Anderson play earlier, and he was hitting some pretty good shots in the corner. So they liked playing in the corner earlier. If they keep it going like that, he could get some points up in this varsity match. Caudillo in for the Vikings. There's going to be a foul on the floor as Bilby goes back to the line for another two shots. Gilliland picks up his second quick foul. Again, minute 40 left. You know, kind of play things out with some of these JV kids. Bilby, second shot. Also no good. So what you're telling me, Wood, is if I played this year, I may have gotten some minutes if they're going this deep in the bench. Maybe, but Maybe. not on varsity. <laughs> That's the only place I can play. Sadly, seniors cannot play JV. Otherwise, I'd be what they call a JV demon, Wood. Evan Hutto gets the tough two points there. As Cohen Wheeler tried to take the charge, didn't get the call, though. Colby Baker with the three-point trap at the three-point line. Spurrier to Lukey, now to Bilby for a three-point shot off the rim. Spurrier tries to get the rebound. Oh. Lukey right off his fingertips. And that's going to be Viking basketball. Hutto now with the ball. Oh! Throws it away, looking for Yates Gilliland. Unfortunately, cut back, tried to cut back door right at the last second. Baker gets it to Bilby. Bilby taking it down the middle, a little around the back. Gets him. Gets him. Colby Baker gets fouled going up. Evan Hutto nice left little, his ankles at half court. Nice little dish afterwards, too. Plays like that can get you on varsity, that's all I'm saying. That's against a starter from Winfield. Made him look a little silly. 
Landon Bilby with a little sham god down uh, there at the half court marker. Tripping up Evan Hutto. Baker, his second shot. Balls, great free throw. Hutto now. He's in what in revenge now. Watch this. Nope, oh, scared. Chatham looking to drive, goes up and gets the end one. Oh, they're going to call it on the floor, it looks like. That's tough, especially <laughs> after having that nice, tough layup with Chatham. the contact come in. No, 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 they're going to leave it off the floor. They're going to go on the shot, give them the and one. Or no, they're not going to count the, the shot. They're in the bonus. Oh, I thought I had basketball knowledge. Almost. Keep trying. I'll be there one day. Chatham. Second shot is good. Twenty seconds left here in the game. Baker gets it to Lukey. I think she's just gonna pass it around, let the clock run out. Spurrier now back to Lukey as he'll wait the clock out at the top of the key. It's the right thing to do right there. Absolutely. Good sportsmanship by these boys. 25-point win here for the Blue Comets. Great game here tonight by both teams. Thank you so much to the Winfield Vikings for coming all the way here uh, from middle of Kansas. From Winfield. I had, to, I had to look up where Winfield was. Apparently it's know? over. It's right by of, Wichita. Yeah, yeah, I didn't know that. I've never been there before. Anyways. Congratulations to this new Blue Comets. We hope everybody has a great night. We'll see you again next time right here on Comet Vision. at Human Touch at your bank? At Community National Bank and Trust, you'll be able to talk with a real person. Community National Bank is small enough to know you, yet big enough to offer the best products. Your busy lifestyle requires banking options like mobile deposit and people-to-people -people pay. With locations in Southeast Kansas and Southwest Missouri, Community National Bank and Trust can help keep your finances safe and your spending smarter. Online at mybankcnb.com. Community National Bank and Trust. Federally insured. Locally awesome. Member FDIC.